Hi, welcome to the channel. So if you've seen my other videos, you'll know that over the last year, I've gone down this rabbit hole of exploring mechanical customizable keyboards. What I'm trying to get across is that these keyboards are more accessible than they first appear. It seems very intimidating when you first look at them and you think, what are you going to do with all this customization? So what I've actually ended up doing is going down the road of, of developing a 36 key layout. So for me, this makes a lot of sense because it seems the closest kind of layout I can think of that mirrors the, the real life ergonomics. You know, you've got your home position with your fingers and then it's one key away from each of your your fingers including your thumbs so the thumbs have a home key too and then one each side um, and there's no outer key for the the little fingers because you know doing stuff with your little fingers is kind of awkward so I just wanted to get rid of that too uh, so I think I'm kind of there so obviously it's really hard to fit all of your kind of key controls and all the things that you need your keyboard to do into just these few keys. You need to use the layer system quite heavily. So the first version of this 36 key layout that I came up with built upon the layer, the default layer organization where you hold down the layer key and then fire the key while you're holding that down. Uh, but I was actually finding, especially when using the mouse mode with both of those layer keys held down, I put the mouse mode on that layer. Uh, I was getting a bit of pain in this part of my hand here and I wanted to explore how I could improve the ergonomics of this kind of a layout. And so that meant basically creating a layout where they, the layers are, are permanent switches. So you go into the layer and the keyboard stays in that layer without you having to hold something down all the time. So one of the interesting things about joining the Colmac Discord group was that there were some really great resources listed in that group. So one of those articles was about cording and how it's actually not that ergonomic. So that's when you're holding down two keys or more to achieve something. So all the modifiers on the Mac is essentially a chord where you're holding down the modifier and then hitting another key. So what I wanted to do was avoid as much of that as possible, especially as a result of using the layer system. Because it's kind of, I don't think there's much point in going down this road of, of trying to in improve the ergonomics by removing keys, if it means we're then doing more cording, which is kind of potentially worse than just maybe stretching to reach a, a different key that has its own dedicated key. But I figured if I could combine both of those ideas, you know, removing cording and removing keys, so keeping all the keys within the one distance from your home row and avoiding cording, then we're talking about really quite an ergonomic setup here. So if you're new to the idea of customizable keyboards, Oryx is software provided by ZSA, which is the manufacturer of the keyboard I'm using here, the Moonlander. Um, but if you're using other sort of more customizable geeky kind of keyboards, you might have to kind of program these layouts yourself. Um, that's why I like the ZSA keyboards because they make it so easy to get into this and start fiddling with the different layouts and you just you know use the software and, and put the new layout onto your keyboard. Um, and that's really cool. So do check out my other videos on sort of getting started with mechanical keyboards. I'll link to those in the description. Uh, if you wanted a bit more information on that. So basically the idea is you jump into Oryx and then you, you build the layout that you want and you put that onto the keyboard. So if we jump into Oryx here, we can take a look. So this is where we start to get into how I've set this up in terms of the layers to avoid having to hold down a switch key to get into the layer. So the interesting thing basically with this layout is we need to be able to know which layer we're in without looking at the keyboard. So we can't rely on the lighting, uh, not least because I can't really see the keys <laughs> with this new setup anyway. So with this layout where we're, we're not holding any key down to get into a layer, we need to be able to know reliably and repeatedly which layer we're actually in at a given moment in time. And the way we can do that is by making sure the mechanism we use to switch layers doesn't actually do anything different once you're in the layer that it should take you into. So basically this key here, uh, which is the mech key, which is this one on my thumb here. That is the key that gets us into this layer from anywhere else on the keyboard. And obviously tapping it when we're in this layer doesn't do anything at all because it's just the modifiers um, on this key. So that means it's a sort of safe way of knowing that if you tap that, you know you're in this layer even if you were already in that layer. And the same logic applies to this navigate layer. So the way we get into this navigate layer is actually from this layer, we hit the one shot layer with our thumb here, which actually puts the keyboard into this layer. And then we whack the little finger down here onto layer three, which puts us into the navigate layer here. So basically those two keys will get us into here. And if we're already in here, doing those two keys doesn't do anything. It just would basically fire the command key and then nothing at all, which is deliberately left blank for that purpose. It means that I can repeatedly do this and know that I'm in navigate layer. So that's the key to making this work uh, without getting yourself really confused as to which layer. And you need to be able to set up a way of getting into a layer and make sure if you're already in that layer, hitting it again doesn't do anything odd. 
So this is quite an interesting layer in the navigate layer here. So once we're in that, again, we can just tap that to get in there as much as we like. Uh, we've got the arrow keys here and the mouse keys here. So we can jump around with the mouse and I'm using the acceleration controls on the right hand here and then click is the left here. The interesting thing about this layer is we've got the application switcher, which I can just do by holding down the right thumb here, which is the command, and then hitting tab here. And I can also hit the back tick key below that to go backwards. Now that works really well. So normally the B key here, we are actually set up in this layer to do a few extra functions. So when we get into the application switcher, we can tap this key to quit an application and we can hold it to hide it. And the fun thing is that we can actually move the mouse uh, with the keyboard in this layer as well. So you can use that to interact with the application switcher here as well. And the, the good thing about all of that is it means you can actually drag things into the application switcher all with the mouse control on the keyboard, which is really handy, especially with a keyboard layout like this. You don't necessarily want to be doing little interactions with the mouse. You want to stay on the keyboard as long as you can. Uh, so it's great to be able to use the application switch like that because that provides quite a, a sort of useful feature on the Mac environment to be able to do that. And we've also got tab controls here for the Mac as well. So previous tab and next tab, which is based on the control tab and shift control tab shortcuts and then navigation history back and forwards for web browsing on these ones here. Again, that all works really nicely. Another little shortcut I added to this layer to work well with the arrow keys if you're sort of tapping between files in the finder. So you can just tap space to get the preview thing in finder or you can hold it down to open it using command O. So a couple of nice little shortcuts there. So we've got a special layer for numbers basically. So we double tap this thumb key, which is our sort of way into the one shot layer. Uh, and then once we're in there, tapping it again, the second time would take us into layer two. So this is this layer. And obviously once you're already in that layer, it doesn't matter if you did the double tap on that thumb again. So again, we've got the mechanism to get into this layer, uh, nice and repeatable. And it, if you're already in there, it doesn't do anything odd. So this is great. This is, means you've got the numpad right under your right hand here whenever you need it. And you've got backspace and return on here as well as tab and escape. So it's just generally a very useful layer. So all these keys on the numpad layer here will actually always fire the command version, including these, which is some really useful Mac keyboard shortcuts uh, when you hold them down. So you just have to tap and hold on those and you get the command version. You've also got the command key here if you needed it. I think generally that's useful if you're just quickly going to do a command click. You can just, you've got that on that layer. So while we're in this layer, we can see that we've actually got another layer root here. So um, going into this layer with two taps of my right thumb, then hitting this with my little finger will actually take us into a sort of a rarely used layer, which is this one, which just controls the keyboard itself and sets the lighting up um, and offers the reset control there as well. So that's a sort of rarely used one. So it's sort of three keys to get into that, uh, but that's fine. You know, that's a good use of this kind of setup. So in, in my last version of this layout, I introduced the idea of the command version of the letter keys being uh, enabled using the tap layer. So we've got tap dance enabled here. So when you hold these down, you get the command version of the key. And that works really well because it means you don't have to worry about having the command key as a permanent modifier available on this home row. And that means basically with these six keys, uh, available to your thumbs, we can do other things, which enables a huge amount of power. So the first one here, if we just go through these thumb keys, the first one is this key, and that actually just fires Alt, Shift and Control. So basically I can set up um, routines on the Mac using Keyboard Maestro to use these as launcher keys. So I just hold that key down and then hit these keys and I can launch different apps. So that's super cool um, and very effective. And because this is the mech key and not the hyper key, it means I can actually have two different launcher keys set for each key. So a quick tap will give me one option. For example, uh, if I do this and S, I get Safari. But if I hold it down, I get Simulator. So you can set up all these really cool shortcuts. And I found actually this is one of the best ways of working with the Mac. It avoids the use of the app switcher here, which is still fully accessible in this layout. But to avoid the use of that, you can use these, these direct key launchers and that really does speed up the workflow a lot. Okay, so this is the space key, which on hold gives you command space. So it's a quick way of getting spotlight, uh, nothing too dramatic there, but it is the home thumb key. So it's nice to have space back under the home thumb key because the layout switch was uh, sort of in that position normally on these layouts. And then the other thumb key on the left hand is shift, which means obviously you can quickly get shift on any of these keys. And then if we go over to the right hand, the right thumb is alt, uh, obviously important to 
have access to that for a lot of the Mac keyboard shortcuts. And it's nice having it just accessible there because obviously normally keyboard shortcuts on the Mac that use Alt tend to be very awkward. You have to kind of really get a strange configuration with your hand to, to get those shortcuts. So brilliant, just have that so accessible under your thumb there. And because you are using it with your thumb, of course, it, it doesn't need to be repeated on both halves of the keyboard. You can access any of the letter keys with either hand, just with this single one held down. So this is a one shot layer, which is uh, taking us into layer one here. So if we just jump into that, we can see this is basically all of our symbols. So these are keys that you tend to only need to fire once at a time. They're not keys that you might repeat, you know, like arrow keys where you might need to do several of them. There's none of that in here. This is just single events. Um, we've got escape and tab as well and return over here. So return is actually just a question of hitting this uh, home thumb key and then the little finger. Uh, where the letter O is and that gives you return. Now you can actually do that either by holding it down or two consecutive taps and I think this is where the the ergonomic sort of thing really starts to fit in. Once you start doing these these consecutive taps for these kinds of things instead of holding stuff down you find the fatigue on your hand reduces. So enter is two taps now instead of one obviously but I'm not stretching my little finger so I think that's this is probably one of the closest points where you could argue it's sort of faster and easier just to reach over and hit the enter key with your little finger. So obviously on the Moonlander, you could definitely um, set up this as your permanent enter key if you wanted to go down that road. But I'm kind of interested in exploring this sort of purist idea of, of going to 36 keys. So I've put the enter key on this one shot layer. So there's a few interesting things going on in here as well. So we've got tap dance on this key to switch between some currency symbols here. So tap is the pound sign and hold is the euro sign. So that's nice and logical. Uh, we've got this key here, which is useful for command lines. So that's just, you know, a one shot and then little finger and that's there. And it's nice to have the proper punctuation symbols very easily accessible here as well. And in fact, this one being a home key is, is a nice way of just ensuring that when you're using an apostrophe in normal typing, you get the proper symbol instead of the, the prime key here. Uh, and again, this is a tap dance key. So on hold, I get the back tick key. So all these kind of interesting programming keys are, are accessible, but also nicely balancing the sort of more ornamental characters for, for proper typing as well. And we've got print screen on hold on this one, which is uh, the, the sort of selection and copies the screen selection to the clipboard, which is a really, really handy Mac uh, shortcut to have so accessible. Just basically hold down the one shot key and hold down this. Now, interestingly, with the one shot layer, it doesn't work with the hold events unless you hold the one shot key down as well. So this is the few times where you do need to hold down the layer key to access this. So you'd hold down the thumb one shot layer key and then you'd hold down these ones. So anything that has the hold function here, you just need to remember that you're holding down the one shot thumb key as well. But for these normal first tap events, you can do it consecutively. So you hit the one shot layer key with your thumb. You can just do that as a quick tap and then you follow it with one of these keys. And once it fires that, it puts you straight back in to this layer as well. So it's a great way of firing one of those keys without actually holding anything down and without needing to add keys around your normal layer. So this layout's taken a lot of development to get to this point and it's at the stage now where it is no longer kind of doing anything weird while I'm working with it, it's not catching me out. Uh, so I think that's a good sign that I've kind of got everything in place in a way that isn't causing any issues. Uh, and it's very enjoyable to use the keyboard like this. You know, you find yourself doing these, these consecutive actions to, to do things instead of holding stuff down all the time. And it, it really obviously immediately reduces the fatigue on your hands to work with a keyboard like that. Even as far as all the all these keys on the one shot layer, which you'd normally need shift to access on a normal keyboard, that's a chord. And we've avoided that with this. We can just use the one shot system. So it's a tap of the thumb and then it's the key that you want for these symbols. So even though Apple keyboards have normally got thousands of keys, you still need to use the shift key to get at these symbols. So we're improving on a keyboard that has loads of keys, as well as removing kind of one of the, the sort of problems inherent with a multi-layer keyboard layout too. So I'll link to this layout in the description. And I've also put it onto the plank as well, which looks like this, uh, you know, the same basic 36 key layout. Uh, and again, it works very well. And even on iPads, it still works. Obviously, you lose the, the keyboard maestro app launches and things like that. Um, but that's okay. The basic layout still works. And of course, you can plug that into a Mac. So there are loads of videos on this channel about this keyboard, as well as all kinds of other interesting ways of improving our workflow in our day to day lives, as well as through productivity here. So don't forget to hit subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you in the next video.